Hey guys, Greenbird here. I hope everyone is doing awesome. I've had a couple questions regarding my toolkit, so I thought I'd break out all my tools uh, just so I know what, everything that I had as well and see if there was anything I could thin out uh, to make my bucket a little bit lighter. So I'm just going to go through everything that I have from hammer stones to billets to um, tools to perform maintenance on my tools and how I store them and and uh, just the whole the whole kit and caboodle. So I'm going to start over here with my hammer stones. This top row here, these are all hammer stones that I got from Dave Ten Bears. You can tell that there's a lot of use on these. Really nice hammer stones. And this is a, a grinder, a grinding stone that I got from Dave as well. It fits just perfectly in your hand. Look how convex that is on the top. Or, well, it's on the bottom because that's the part facing your hand, but and it's got, uh, you can tell it's had a lot of wear and tear on there. I've added some to it. And here's a sandstone grinder also. And I got this from gonapping.com. This is just, you know, slabbed uh, sandstone. And as we get down here, uh, this hammerstone I believe I got from Dave as well. This one fits in your hand really nice as well. All these do. And then, uh, so different various sizes of hammerstones different weights. Some of these are a lot lighter. This was a lighter one. But I love it. I use it all the time. Here's kind of a heavier one. Then here's a beautiful one. This I think this is quartzite. It's kind of a weird time of day, so I'm not sure if I'm getting shadows or not. But it's real smooth, real heavy, real dense feeling. I think that's quartzite. If I'm not mistaken, I could be mistaken. And then uh, this big boy here. <laughs> Look how round that is. That's a beautiful stone. This I got, I think I got this before I even started flint napping. It was just such a cool stone. I had to have it. And then down here are some weird shaped ones. Here's a, a long skinny one. It's good for different types of things. A small one. Believe it or not, I have used this. And it works. Probably better off using a pressure flaker, but I used it anyway. Oh, here's another one I think I got from Dave. I, I forgot to put this one up in that, that pile. Yeah, I definitely got this one from Dave. I can tell by the wear and tear. This one's nice and light. I should probably get rid of that. So there's that. Then I have my pad that I use for pressure flaking. My little uh, pieces of leather. That's for when I don't want to use the pad and I want to do some pressure flaking and just, um, you know, put it in my hand and be able to have, be able to feel it a little bit better than on the rubber pad. Makes a big difference sometimes. Um, then down here I have my billets. So I have, these are all solid copper right here, and they're really heavy. Uh, it's, it's definitely a learning curve to get used to using those. And I don't use them that often. I probably could, I guess, use them more than I do. If I get big, heavy, like nasty stone, like rhyolite, or, um, you know, something like that, that it, it does help take away, you know, when you're swinging lighter billets, you're swinging harder, you're getting more vibration through your arm into your elbow. These allow you to swing a little bit slower. And then over here I have some billets that I made, just some basic uh, lead heads. These are just copper plumbing caps with lead in them onto your basic dowels. I've got one here, a medium sized one that I also put a pressure flaking uh, rod onto the other side of it. Here's another one. And then here's a little one. I originally made this one for my daughter when she was a little bit younger, when she was flint napping with me. And then up here, this set here I got from uh, James Conacher. These three right here. And as you can tell, they really, they need some maintenance. Speaking of maintenance, that's what these tools over here are for. This ball peen hammer, this is for pounding down the copper. If it gets, if it gets too roughed up, that's not too bad, but it probably could use it. This one for sure. This one's probably about ready to break through. I'm going to have to just re refurbish this one. But when it gets like that, if you pound down the brass, I'm sorry, the copper, to sort of flatten it back down again, it brings it back to life. Makes it a lot easier to use and grips better and more consistently. These here are interesting. These I got from uh, Trey McCord. He has a YouTube channel too if you want to check it out. I don't think he has a lot on there, but he has some cool stuff on there. And these are uh, just copper plumbing pipes, a copper cap. And what he does is he fills, the, well, I don't know if you can see that or not, but he fills it all the way with lead to about here. And then he takes a, a dowel or a stick. There you go, you can see the hole. 
and he pushes it down all the way to the top. So what it does is it um, creates a, a, a gap in there, but it also pushes the rest of the lead a little bit further towards the handle. So that lead actually now comes up to about here. And boy, these things just work beautiful. I love them. They're, again, they're, they're sort of like the solid copper. They take a little bit of getting used to. Not as much of a learning curve as the solid copper. And this little one here, you can just do amazing things. You can take paper thin flakes with this thing. I don't use this enough. That reminds me I need to use this. Um, so, getting back down here to the billets. This right here is uh, an antler billet. I got this from GoNapping.com as well. And it's a, kind of a smaller one. This is... Um, you know, kind of a, almost like a finishing billet. I got this from uh, in a kit. It came with this, some stone, and this antler tine pressure flaker, which I love. It works awesome. I'll get back to this in a second. So here's all my pressure flakers. This one has a horseshoe nail in it. This is one I made. And you can tell this is my friction fit. I love friction fit. It's got the BBs in the bottom there, and then the toothpicks, which give it the friction fit. This one's all bent up. I, I bent that up a little bit last time I was using it. So I need to, need to reshape that a little bit. Those horseshoe nails, uh, they're really for finishing work. I used it on a piece that was a little bit too thick. Um, again, this one needs to be straightened out as well or put a new copper nail in there. I kind of abused it. Got to be better about that. Uh, I'll fix that later. Then here's what I got from Dave. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, that, that that's, um, I don't know, maybe that's not, that might just be an aluminum rod. I thought it was the, the tire repair tool that he, he sometimes makes pressure flakers out of. But uh, that might just be an aluminum rod. And that thing works really good, too. It works, it works really great. It grips really well. Um, and here's one of the first pressure flakers that I made. This is just a piece of beech wood with a copper nail in it. It's not very sharp. And here's another pressure flaker I got from Dave. Looks like it was a broom handle. A little copper nail in there. Or a piece of copper rod. Um, going back up here to the tools, the repair tools, I skipped that. This file here I use to uh, keep an edge on my pressure flakers. And I know what you guys are going to say. You should pound it out, you should hammer it, you shouldn't file it. It gets it hot, it softens it up. All of that is true. But um, if you go real slow, and I find that if I, I, I pick something up from Rex, from Rex Hex, um, I was slowly rubbing the file against it. And um, not only was that a little bit more difficult, but it also, because I use friction fit, oftentimes would break the friction fit and I'd have to re, um, you know, reposition everything. But if you draw, if you push the pressure flicker towards the end of the file instead, it doesn't interfere with that friction fit and it sharpens it. You can go real slow and still um, you know, get a good fit, so I like that. Um, this is my bear spray, because I'm in Maine, you know, so I always like to be prepared. Um, these are, this is my eye protection, and these are actually shooting glasses. So I've had these for a while. They don't get scratched up like the, like the safety glasses do, and they, they're super, super clear, easy to see through. So those are, those are great, and they're real thick. Nothing's gonna break that or get through there. These goggles up here, this is what I keep for my daughter. If my daughter flip naps, I make her wear the goggles because I'm a paranoid dad. Um, here's my cup-proof gloves, just in case I'm working something like obsidian and I don't feel like, you know, if, if I'm away from home and I'm working something like obsidian, I just don't want to take any chances of getting a bad... I've gotten some nasty cuts from obsidian. I mean, cuts that I definitely would have needed stitches for, but, um, you know, I'm kind of stubborn like that and I didn't want to go. And You know, when I first started, my hands were just covered in band-aids and cuts and everything, and... Um, it was it wasn't pretty this right here is just a, a belt that I trimmed down it was uh, I lost a lot of weight and it was way too big for me so I, uh, I cut it down and I use it for a, a strap under my leg to help keep the uh, issue sticks and the indirect tools under my leg because for some reason I have a really hard time I don't know if it's because my legs are too small I need to bulk up a little bit or something but I have a really hard time keeping the issue stick under my leg um, this is just BBs and toothpicks. This is what I use for my friction fit, for my uh, pressure flakers. Um, and here is uh, the, the first indirect tool that I had. This is one from Dave Ten Bears. And it's just a you know steel rod with an aluminum rod in there. And when, the, when that rod wears down, you just 
I think he said to hammer it and you can push it back down, but I haven't had a problem with it. Uh, so far I haven't worn it down enough. And here's another issue stick indirect tool that I got from Dave. It's steel. It's got a steel tip to it, not copper. Steel does work. I know there's a lot of people are like, you got to use copper. Steel won't work. I'll slide. I've seen people use anything. You know, steel. I think I've seen Jack Crafty use, um, uh, I don't know what it is, but it's not steel. It's not copper. It's uh, another softer material, a uh, plumbing type material. I, don't, I can't remember exactly what it is. And then here's the issue sticks that I use for indirect. This one works pretty well, except for I need to get a I need to get a flatter nail for it, a thicker nail, I think. But um, that's what I've been using. I can't remember if this is the one. Yeah. And then here's the one that I just made, and I'm gonna probably take this apart, drill the hole a little bit deeper, and push that copper down there. It's a full view of it. Um, because the copper, see, you can if I roll it, you can see there's a slight bend in the rod. Even though that's a thick rod, you know, it's copper. So, um, and I was hitting towards the top where the, where the, where the clamp is, where the plumbing clamp is too, so that needs to go a little bit deeper. And this, right here, another indirect tool, but um, it's not functional at the moment. I just haven't been able to get that copper rod, I mean, that, yeah, the copper rod out. And this came in a set. You can see it's just slightly bigger than the other one. And uh, I am going to order another set of these because I think they make really good uh, small billets for fine work. Um, so I think I'm going to order some more. But you can see over on this side here where it cracked and blew out. And I, ha I actually did that on video. So if you, if you uh, scroll back through my videos, you'll be able to see where... And I didn't even realize it was happening, but it happened. I think it happened like... Somebody told me it happened like 30 minutes into the video or something like that. And I just kept going with it and... That's probably why I was having limited success. I didn't realize it until after the video. These are these are what I use to uh, as a um, billet to hit the indirect tools. So this one here I use the most. This one's awesome. It's just a piece of be uh, beech wood, super dense, perfect uh, you know length. I think you can see where I've been using it. It's just got the perfect amount of weight. I started off using this. This is uh, walnut. And every once in a while, I'll still break this out, especially with, you know, larger stuff. But I found that the walnut, it just, it's so big. I just didn't really have a lot of control. I didn't need that girth to it. This works just perfect. And then this is just an old chisel. I think it's a chisel. Um, no, it's a punch. It's a punch. And... Um, I use this if I'm, you know, it's pretty heavy, but it's also so narrow that I can get a lot of control over it if I want, if I just want, you know, small flakes and, you know, it's funny, I have all these indirect tools and I'm not very good at indirect percussion. I'm still in the process of learning that skill. This over here, I never got back to it. This is a diamond bit file. I originally had this because I used to blow glass and I would use it to clean the bead wash out of the inside of the beads because um, you know what you do is you take a steel rod they call it a mandrel and you cover it in bead wash and then you you melt your glass and a torch over the, um, the the mandrel and that's how you then you shape the bead and then when you take the bead off you use the diamond tip file so I'm working one-handed here so I don't think I'm gonna be able to Let's see if I can do this and um, there should be a few different yeah several different bits in there and obviously I don't have any use right now for this one here. But these two, especially this, this one in the middle here, works really good if you get a stalled notch. Um, you can sometimes file, just file the, an edge if it's, get rid of that flat, um, you know, that flat edge that's in the, the notch. You can kind of file at an angle, set yourself up with another platform, or at least give you an angle to where you, get, you have something for your pressure flake or to grip onto uh, to get a good get a good run so anyway that's it and I keep it all in this bucket right here you know I don't even remember where I got this bucket but I think I inherited it when my uh, when my, my, when my wife's dad I'm sorry it's cold out here my, my face is starting to go a little numb uh, I inherited it when my wife's dad moved to the Philippines and of course a pack of band-aids and that plastic bag that's just more toothpicks and BBs for um, dropping into pressure flakers and reshimming if I have to so that's it, guys. That's, that's my kit. And 
I try and use as much of it as I can, as much as often as I can, but to be honest with you, the majority of what I use are these three billets here. Sorry, I keep hearing something. These three billets here and uh, this, these two pressure flakers. And of course, you know, I do use the horseshoe nails for fine tuning and notching and stuff like that. Um, but I've been trying to use this set of tools over here a little bit more because, like I said, that's a skill set that I'm I'm chasing after, and I'm hoping, I don't know, I'm hoping that it'll click soon here. So anyway, if anybody has any questions about any of those tools, if there's something that I skipped or I wasn't clear about or I went too fast, just let me know. All right, guys. Until next time, I hope everybody's doing awesome, and uh, I'll see you next time. Pelly Greenbird signing out.